Hi, I'm Megan Kim with Cozy and the Greater Cleveland Partnership, and I am joined today by Victoria Avi, who is a partner at Venture Forward Strategies. Thank you for being here with us today. And so we're going to talk today about sustainability and why sustainability is so important for small businesses to also embrace. So talk a little bit about what's the benefit for a small business, what's sort of the um, what's in it for me and how that can help their companies. To yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me, Megan. Uh, like you said, I'm part of Venture Forward Strategies. It's a small, Cleveland-based, women-owned uh, sustainability consulting oh. firm. And uh, we work with businesses uh, of all sizes uh, and help them on their sustainability journey. There are many benefits to becoming a more sustainable company. There's many benefits in integrating sustainability practices mm -hmm. in uh, your business operations. One of them, the biggest one is cost savings. Um, many companies start with waste reduction, energy efficiency, uh, water reduction or water efficiency projects. And those are usually a low hanging fruit of uh, sustainability. Companies see a lot of savings up front. Um, companies see a lot of savings over time. Um, and that goes directly to their bottom line. Another benefit of uh, in integrating sustainability in your practices is uh, improving your reputation in the community yeah. uh, and decreasing your environmental impact. Uh, we have seen a lot of changes in climate and environmental degradation. Companies are becoming more curious about how they can improve their environmental impact. So this can all be overwhelming, right? So where does, a, where does a small business or a middle market company start? How do they start to sort of understand what the opportunities are? This field has grown tremendously over the last 20 years. So there's a lot of uh, different uh, materials and resources out there. And how do you kind of uh, sort through them and find the ones that are relevant to you? Um, well, we help organizations and companies with that. If uh, companies feel overwhelmed, we can certainly come in and help them organize that and come up with a strategy and an implementation plan. Um, but if companies are kind of just curious and want to uh, start small, there are a lot of free resources available, right. especially for small and medium-sized companies in Northeast Ohio. I always say we are so rich with resources here, and a lot of them are untapped. Um, so one of my favorite resources that I love to share with companies is the Solid Waste District. So Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District um, is an organization that provides a lot of free resources for companies to understand how to go through the waste audit, um, what's important to measure, what kind of KPIs they need to start tracking, and so on. In addition, they uh, have a uh, business recycling specialist uh, that can come into uh, your facility. Oh, wonderful and walk through the facility with you and kind of identify some opportunities for improvement. With energy efficiency, <clears throat> another great resource is through COSI and GCP. Uh, there's a free energy audit that a company can go through if they have a facility that's 10,000 square feet um, uh, or larger. A few other resources that companies should check out is Ohio EPA. Um, Ohio EPA has a Department of uh, Pollution Prevention um, and they offer free walkthroughs uh, of facilities as well and help companies um, kind of identify opportunities for improvement as well. It's a non-regulatory department, so companies shouldn't worry about <laughs> having uh, EPA uh, walking through their facility. Um, and that's regardless of size, uh, the, even a very small company? Yes, One very small, small or very large. Yep, they can come. Um, they uh travel all around the state. It's great. So, to do great. That, yeah. Another great resource I would love to share with businesses is uh, industrial assessment centers. We have two in the state of Ohio. One is at Case Western Reserve University and the other one at University of Dayton. Uh, so they offer um, walkthroughs and other resources for manufacturing companies. And there's some requirements that they have to meet uh, to be able to use that resource, but that's another great one. I want to dig into something uh, that you said at the very beginning. So we've talked a lot about, obviously, there's, uh, you know, saving costs is a benefit. And so a lot of the resources that you talked about will help businesses do that. But you talked about reputation. Talk about that a little bit, because I know that's something that's important for small companies, especially as they're competing for talent and for uh, new business. And so the value of, of, you know, really embracing sustainability is, is positive for a small and middle market company. You know, we're seeing a lot of challenges with attracting employees. Um, I think across the board, probably every company is experiencing that. Uh, we have seen some companies that have put their purpose 
and their mission and vision that's connected to sustainability or social impact in some way. Fourth, when they attract employees, and that makes a difference. So uh, we have seen so many studies and so many surveys that show that the new generation of uh, uh, yes. employees want that yes. in the company. Right. They're looking for purpose. And uh, so companies that communicate that publicly have an easier job kind of finding and uh, not only attracting, but also retaining employees. It's also important to remember how the company uh, relates to the community they work in and they live in, and that could play a role uh, when sustainability and social impact is part of the organization's or company's ethos. It really does translate how they uh, relate to their community and how they play a role in their community. So it, it does have a great point. It's a great point. So if they start to embrace some of these practices, focus on saving money, environmental footprint, reputation, um, how do businesses measure and track? Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations on sort of tools that they can use or how you say this is actually, um, you know, helping my business to be more successful and, and grow? Every company has their own set of KPIs that they measure. Um, some of the common KPIs that we have seen uh, when it comes to measuring sustainability success or sustainability progress is around waste, so waste reduction. So how much waste have you reduced? A lot of companies have zero waste goals or zero to landfill goals. Um, so you can kind of identify your baseline and then see through your waste reduction initiatives how much you've reduced uh, over time. Energy efficiency is another great one. You can measure that. You can look at your baseline and say, okay, this is where we were, and our goal is to reach, um, you know, net zero or um, other kind of energy-related goals and track that. Emissions play a big role. Um, also in uh, kind of understanding how sustainability uh, practices play out in your organization, a lot of companies measure their um, greenhouse gas emissions uh, again, uh, establishing a baseline when they start the initiatives, um, they kind of measure where they are and set some goals and targets and then implement initiatives to reach those sets and targets. Mm -hmm. So greenhouse gas emissions will um, only be more important as larger companies uh, start, they're starting to ask their suppliers, what are your greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, can you help us um, uh, can you help us report on these numbers? So this might be getting too much into the weeds, but uh, greenhouse gas emissions are broken down to three scopes, scope one, two, and three. Um, every company can measure somewhat easily their scope one and two because it's within their control. Uh, a scope, scope one is usually what they burn on site if they generate any um, uh, electricity on site or any energy on site, that would be under scope one. Um, fleet would be under scope one as well. Um, scope two is what they buy. So if they buy electricity, if they buy natural gas, that would be under scope two. Um, and scope three is everything beyond that. So that's a quite, it's a large category. Um, and imagine if uh, you're a large company and most of your greenhouse gas emissions are beyond your control. So in your scope three, mm -hmm. in order for you to understand what that number is, you need to reach out to your suppliers and get that information from them. So we can certainly help with that. Um, Venture Forward Strategies is e equipped to guide a company through that process. Uh, but again, there's a lot of free resources also available. In regards to the benefits of um, starting with sustainability initiatives at your company is when you have those requests from bigger companies, you can reply to them, you can respond to those requests kind of getting ready for more of those. So more of your customers will start asking these questions. Um, and so the earlier you start, the better prepared you are for that conversation, right. um, the more opportunities for you to retain that customer. So you're a small business owner. Um, what practices have you implemented or do you have any success stories that you can talk about? So, you know, there is, there's green and going green, right? And so just trying to help small businesses understand um, Again, what's that, what's that benefit and how can this be really something good that businesses should look into? My business is very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> um, I operate out of my house. <laughs> so it's, it's um, um, even though it's, it is small, there's still opportunities to um, 
incorporate sustainability initiatives. Uh, when it comes to purchasing specifically, if you look at your procurement and purchasing um, policies, uh, when was the last time you've updated that? Um, how do you determine where you buy and what you buy uh, for your business? Even if you ha if you run a small office, you probably buy paper if you still print. Uh, is that paper, um, you know, is it, does it have recycled right. content mm -hmm. or uh, who makes that paper? Where does it come from? Like, so it's, it's about asking these questions. What is important to you and to your company? How do you orient everything um, in your operations towards your purpose, mission, um, and goals, and also towards your definition of sustainability. I think that's an important point to make is every company has to define what sustainability means to them. Mm -hmm. There's not one definition that applies to everyone. If you have 100 companies, 100 people in the room, there will be 100 definitions. Right. So I had to define what sustainability means to me, and that kind of dictates my actions when it comes to business operations. As far as success stories, there's so many. I know that one of the small businesses in Cleveland went through the energy audit program. It's Mitchell's Ice Cream. Oh, yes. And she, I remember that. So there's actually a video on YouTube uh, them talking about how, why they decided to go through it, what it meant for them, how much money they've saved, and so on. I also know that a lot of companies locally have gone through kind of uh, waste audits and set some waste goals and have reached those goals. Many of them saw savings um, from that because they've reduced the number of times the hauler came to pick up the, uh, the waste. Mm -hmm. I do want to share another resource with you that might be uh, interest interesting to manufacturing companies. Uh, it's called Ohio Material Marketplace. Uh, it's a platform for businesses of any size in Ohio to give away or sell their byproducts or wastes mm -hmm. or to look for byproducts and waste that they could use in their operations. So companies can kind of look for um, ways to find alternative um, sourcing for their materials or find ways to reduce cost of disposal of certain materials if it costs them uh, X, uh number of dollars to dispose of extra hand sanitizer, for example. Okay. Instead of paying for that disposal, they could go on the material marketplace, oh, I'm a material marketplace, and say, who wants this? And, and some companies find uh, continues kind of loops, so you can uh, find a one-off. Let's say you only have three pallets of your product to give away once, and someone wants it, that's great. But if you have that uh, material repeatedly, right, so you know they have a consistent volume of material and you want to find someone who wants to take it consistently, that is called a byproduct synergy. Okay. Um, so that is an incredible resource. It's not available uh, in most states. I think only 16 states around the country have that. Um, so I want to encourage more businesses to look at it. It's free to use. They can register. They can look and see what's available and it can always give away. Pallets is another one. A wood pallets, companies usually have excess amount because they just kind of stack them in the back and they right. take space, we don't know what to do with them. So we see a lot of wood pallets on the material marketplace. So Victoria has certainly proven to us that uh, sustainability is something that our small and middle market companies should look into and we are here to help. So you gave us tons of resources. We're gonna make sure that we provide those resources as a part of the video today as well. But if you want any other information, you can reach out to Victoria. We'll have her contact info on the screen, or you can email us at memberservices at cozy.org and our team will be happy to help you navigate um, all the opportunities that exist around sustainability. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you are a wealth of information um, and we hope that we can get more small companies on board and, and realizing just how important this is to their businesses. Well, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you.